Welcome to my last lecture discussing Chapter 11's coverage of organometallic chemistry. In today's lecture, I'm going to teach you about a very cool reaction called alkene, or sometimes olefin metathesis. Now, just so you know, the word alkene is synonymous with the word olefin, so they can be used interchangeably. So here's our intro. Alkene, also called olefin metathesis, is a super cool reaction developed by three guys named Grubbs, Schrock, and Chauvin, who won the 2005 Nobel Prize for it. If you want, you can look it up at this HTML, or you can just Google it. So what this reaction does is it basically takes two alkenes and stitches them together like this. As you can see in this molecule, I have two alkenes, one here and one down here. Now I'm discounting the benzene ring and its double bonds as counting as alkenes because benzene double bonds don't react the way traditional alkenes do, as we'll discuss in a later chapter. For right now, I'm just looking at the alkenes shown up top and down bottom. Now if I react a molecule like this with an olefin metathesis catalyst, such as a Grubbs catalyst, what the catalyst does is it finds the two internal carbons in the two alkenes, which happen to be these two carbons right here, and then forms a double bond between them, as you can see in this product right here. Now you might ask, what happens to these two other alkene carbons? Well, these two other alkene carbons are freed as ethene gas, this molecule here. Now this molecule ethene is also commonly called ethylene. This is what olefin metathesis is and does, and it's an extremely cool and useful reaction. Now here's the mechanism for olefin metathesis, which you, my students, don't have to know, but I happen to think is really, really cool. The letter M, incidentally, in this mechanism represents a metal, which usually is ruthenium, tungsten, or molybdenum. Here's how the mechanism works. I've got a metal double bonded to a carbon that interacts with my alkene and does this type of electron rearrangement to form a four-membered ring. A subsequent electron rearrangement forms a double bond from what was the internal carbon in my alkene to the metal itself. This also forms a double bond between what was the external carbon in my original alkene and the CH2 that was originally bonded to the metal, releasing it as ethene gas. This molecule now undergoes an analogous transformation with a second molecule of this original alkene to form this four-membered ring. A subsequent electron rearrangement then releases the alkene product in which the internal carbon from one alkene has formed a double bond with the internal carbon from the second alkene, and then releases this metal double bonded to a CH2, which then goes back and repeats the cycle. Now once again for you, my students, you don't have to know this mechanism, but I think it's supremely cool. And the work of Grubbs, Schrock, and Chauvin in this area, not only in terms of developing the chemistry, but also in terms of discovering the, this mechanism, is why they shared the Nobel Prize for it. Now I happen to have found a really cool article where Grubbs discusses using olefin metathesis to form polymers that are being used to create materials for bathroom sinks, parts for combines, stronger baseball bats, and even tank armor. I'm going to share you a couple of clips from that article right now. All right, here's the article which I found online and originates from a Paducah Public Schools publication entitled Blue Line. I really hope that I'm pronouncing that right. Paducah Public Schools. In any event, it highlights some of the words shared by Dr. Robert Grubbs, the Nobel laureate who shared the 2005 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his contribution to the world of olefin metathesis. I just wanted to read a few words from this article that I found to be really, really cool. It says, Dr. Grubbs discussed some of the everyday applications that had come about as a result of his research, like polymers that were used to create bathroom sinks, parts for combines, stronger baseball bats, and tank armor. He said, quote, using chemistry we started out just to have fun, but the result is now being used to make tank armor. The article goes on to say, in addition to stronger materials, Dr. Grubbs showed how the results of his research are being used in varied fields, including the development of hepatitis C and osteoporosis drugs, candles that hold their fragrance better, and pest control. Now, if you're more interested in this article, you're welcome to look it up on the internet. For the time being, I'll say this. Chemistry is really cool, and I want you to believe me when I tell you that organic chemistry has genuine real-life application for a lot of stuff that our society uses every single day. 
This brings us to our final cadre of problem set questions. I want you to predict the products of the following olefin metathesis reactions. Now, in typical Mike style, I am going to give you the answers to these in the next couple of slides, so you're welcome to pause the video right now and attempt them on your own first, if you wish. Here's our first example. I'm taking this molecule and reacting it with a metathesis catalyst, which is once again usually a ruthenium, tungsten, or molybdenum catalyst. How in the world do I go about determining what this reaction is going to do? Well, the way I do it is I draw this molecule twice. One facing the direction it's shown, and another showing its mirror image. The next thing I do is I locate the two internal carbons in my carbon-carbon double bond, which are these ones here. What this catalyst is going to do is form a carbon-carbon double bond between these two internal carbons. These two external carbons, the two CH2s, will be released double bonded to each other as ethene gas. That ultimately gives this product here. This is what a metathesis reaction is and does. Here's our second example. How in the world do I go about doing this? Once again, I draw two molecules of the starting material facing each other, as shown here. I'm going to circle my two internal carbons, and I'm going to remember that this reaction forms a carbon-carbon double bond between those two. These two external carbons, the two CH2s, will once again be double bonded to each other and release as ethylene gas. That ultimately gives rise to this type of product here. All right, here's two other examples. In both of these cases, I've got molecules that have two alkenes in the same molecule. What type of product is it going to form when I do an olefin metathesis reaction? Well, you're welcome to pause the video now and attempt it on your own, as I'm going to show you the answers momentarily. Let's start with our first one. To begin, I'm going to circle the two internal carbons in my carbon-carbon double bonds. This one right here, and this one right here. For the sake of keeping track of stuff, the next thing I'm going to do is number my carbons in my starting material as being 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'm not going to worry about numbering the external carbons because I know they are going to depart double bonded to each other as ethylene in my final product. So when I take this starting material and treat it with a metathesis catalyst, what it's going to do is form a double bond between carbon 1 and carbon 5. Well, you'll note that when that occurs, it's going to form a ring. And the total number of atoms in that ring is going to be 5. Thus, it forms cyclopentene. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's our second molecule. Once again, I'm going to begin by locating the internal carbons in each of my carbon-carbon double bonds. This one here, and this one right here. For the sake of keeping track of stuff, I'm going to number my atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. A metathesis catalyst is, of course, going to form a carbon-carbon double bond between carbon 1 and carbon 6. The external carbons, these two CH2s in my carbon-carbon double bonds, are going to be released as ethylene gas. You'll note that if I form a carbon-carbon double bond between 1 and 6, it's also going to form a ring. Thus, this reaction produces this product, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now you note that in my starting material, carbon 1 was also bonded to a CH3, and it still is in the product. CH3 just has to come along for the ride, like a train car being pulled by a train engine. The double bond is, of course, formed between 1 and 6. The bromine and anything else that's exciting in this molecule is essentially left untouched in the reaction. Now one thing I want you to note is that when I contrast these reactions with the reactions I showed in the previous slide, you can see that these reactions all form rings that weren't present in the starting materials. That is what occurs when you have two double bonds that are tethered together by a bunch of carbons and hydrogens. When they go together, they form a ring. Thus, olefin metathesis, when it's done on two alkenes in the same molecule, is often called ring-closing metathesis. When it's done on two alkenes that are located on separate molecules and stitches them together, it's called cross-metathesis. Here's another olefin metathesis question set. I want you to identify the starting materials that we would need in order to form each of these products. Once again, I'm going to show you the answers momentarily, but I invite you to pause the video first and attempt to do them on your own. 
here's our first example. How in the world do I go backwards from a product to my starting materials in an olefin metathesis reaction? Before beginning, I'm going to go ahead and number our carbon atoms in this ring so that we can keep track of them. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the next thing that I do is I find my carbon-carbon double bond, in this case the one between carbons one and six, and I saw it in half. I then place a CH2 on the end of each half, giving me the starting material. One, two, three, four, five, six. I hope you can see clearly that if I took a metathesis catalyst and reacted it with this starting material, it would indeed form a carbon-carbon double bond between carbons one and six and release these two external CH2s as ethylene gas, thereby forming the product shown here. Now one thing I should also point out to you is that this molecule shown here can be drawn in a neater looking way as this. One, two, three, four, five, six. This molecule down here is indeed the exact same molecule as that shown here. If you reacted it with a metathesis catalyst, it would form the product indicated here. Now, of course, I've given you this other problem right here to do. I am not going to show you the answer on this video, but will let you attempt to do it on your own. So that brings us to the end of this lecture and the end of my lecture coverage of Chapter 11's discussion on organometallic reactions. These reactions are super cool because along with the Diels-Alder reaction we discussed in an earlier chapter, they have the ability to form carbon-carbon bonds, which are, by other traditional means, often very, very difficult to assemble, but at the same time extraordinarily useful for synthesizing molecules. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.